Elections may have come and gone, but cross-capiting is still in full gear as Okorocha's son-in-law rejoins the APC. And former Senator Shou Sani speaks, saying his attention is unfair, unjust, prearranged and politically motivated. This is Plus Politics and I am Felicity Ezewike. Uche Wozu left the APC in 2019. In his words, it was due to the gross injustices netted to him by the National Chairman of the All Progressive Congress, Adam Sushomale. On the 9th of March 2019, Uche Wozu contested for the governorship candidate seat for Imo State under the political platform of Action Alliance Party and lost to Chukwemeka Ihedioha, who ran under the political platform of the People's Democratic Party. Today, he rejoins the APC. What has changed? I'm being joined by Rimon Nkanebe, a legal practitioner. Thank you very much for your time on the program. Thank you, Phyllis. Okay, cross-capiting. Well, this is uh, not the first time, really, and probably will not be the last, but this particular case of Okorocha's son, considering the drama that went around it, does it shock you? Well, it doesn't, it doesn't shock me in any way because um, there's a precedent to it. And we have seen this um, pattern in the political, in the behavior of the Nigerian political class. You see, so um, there is no question of surprise about it. It was always a question of um, uh, when, and it was never a question of if. We already knew that um, depending when he weighs his chances of emerging governor under the platform he contested after what happened with his uh, the party a APC, which has now returned to, um, he, it was clear that um, uh, uh, the party was not going to uh, take him uh, anywhere to realize his political ambitions of actually being the governor of that state, talking about the Action Alliance. And if you recall why his petition was at the tribunal, um, uh, there were insinuations that the Action Alliance, under which he ran for the governorship, went into a political, um, perhaps, perhaps compromise, with the People's Democratic Party and its candidate. And in the very strange circumstances, the party all of a sudden withdrew from the petition at the tribunal. So um, that issue lingered on at the Court of Appeal. He, they lost, but the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court eventually affirmed that Action Alliance actually withdrew from the petition, thereby crippling the fortunes of the petition, even though it, it had succeeded. Right? So I'm sure he would have sat back and um, assessed um, the situation politically and he would be like, the PDP was not going to be uh, a platform he could actually ride on now. And then the Action Alliance, given how they frustrated his ambitions, uh, I think APC was always going to be the option. And uh, I think uh, having, um, since the political season is now fully over and he, he, he would, uh, uh, I think it would be a better calculation for him to go back to the APC and then see how he juggle the next couple of years before the 2023 election to see if he can actually actualize that ambition, which informed this movement. Yeah, but remember he was in APC yes. and the reasons he gave when he left the party was that there were injustices to him. What has changed between that time and now to make him come back to the party? Well, for more indication, nothing has changed. Uh, for me, I see those statements as more of political platitudes. It's just um, uh, a reason you, you sort of give to, uh, perhaps give any sense of justification for your movement at that time. He's not the first person that have used that language of injustice to, to, as a ground for, uh, for the campaign to the next platform. When um, we saw that in, 20, uh, in 2014, uh, in, in the build up to the 2015 election, when some G7 governors and some senators they came from the PDP, the Red Ruling Party, to the All Progressive Congress, they gave similar reason, injustice and all of that, to justify their move. But if you look at the student, the APC, when he left the party, uh, Adam Soshomole was the chairman of the party. Today, the same Adam Soshomole is still the chairman exactly. of the party. So um, it goes to show um, uh, there is no, uh, it was just. Um, it's, it, was, it was never the reason of living in the first place. The, the main motive of moving is um, to realize the political ambition. Because uh, it also goes to justify the, uh, what some 
persons have said that political parties in this part of the world are basically vehicles for actualization of political power and not actually um, ideological caucuses. We'll, where we'll, people... we'll really get to talk about that. Let's okay. see um, in the time available. Let's just talk a little bit more about the Okorocha's uh, son-in-law's uh, situation. Now, do you think this move by him, does he hold, um, will change the political dynamics of the party in Imo state? Does he hold that kind of uh, clout? And uh, do you see him maybe clinching the party's ticket in the next election? Well, uh, whether he's going to clinch the party tickets in 2023 will be shaped by events to come. But um, given my, from my limited knowledge of, um, his, uh, of the politics of Imo state, which also appears to be a very, he has a strong support base among the youth, uh, the youth population in the state. And for, for, for the main fact that he has actually, he came second at that election, you understand? He came second, even though he had just moved to a new party in less than, fairly maybe two to three weeks before the election, he went to that party and was able to amass that number of votes. That gives you an indication of, of his popularity in the state. But you know, they are already, they are, we have some big names in the party, people like Hope Uzodima, who eventually ran for the election on the platform of that party, uh, who are also yet to actualize, who also no similar ambition of governing that state. So it will be a question of how will these forces uh, play against each other, and also how much is going to warm himself into the uh, mind of the party chairman at the time, and um, a whole lot of other factors which we cannot actually uh, 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 predict at this time. But he's a young politician, and he has um, some sense of support at home, and also with the support of his father-in-law, the uh, senator representing uh, um, um, Imo West Natural Zone. I think all of those could play in his favor and stand him in good stead towards clinching the party, the party ticket in 2023. All right, let's talk about a bit, a bit about that ideology thing you were talking about. We we'll start with the place of honor and integrity in all of this. Well, the, he is not the first uh, person to move from one party. We have the controversial case um, at the moment in Okun State. We don't know how that is going to play out. Yes. One of the candidates is trying to get back to the APC. Yes. Where is the place of integrity and honor in all of this? And the citizen who they say they're looking for political uh, parties to use as vehicle to serve. Well, uh, uh, it's, 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 it goes to the heart of the issue. That is uh, the, que the question of, uh, um, of the lack of political ideology that uh, in shaping a membership of political uh, parties. You see, um, in, 20, uh, in 20, was it 2016, when, uh, 2017, when um, some senators on the platform of, of, of the PDP decamped to the APC, it was the same reason that was advanced. And you ask yourself, what has happened? What, what is, you ask yourself, what, uh, there are no, there are, if I use just a, a, a business as it were, people just moving to platform based on, uh, perhaps if you, if, um, if, if they are, uh, let's say, um, if there are um, concerns within the party, perhaps maybe some members of the party uh, 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 suddenly find themselves disagreeing with the president and the president seems to be of a particular party. In order to, uh, a sort of political, a proxy war, you just, okay, join forces with the other side and then give any, any reason you like and then uh, uh, it stands. Uh, even though the constitution at section 68 of the constitution seems to um, prohibit this sort of movement, especially in the National Assembly, where it provides that if you move, if you decamp from your party to another party without any fracture, without any division in your party, that the consequence is that that senator who makes that movement should lose its seat. But we have seen the judiciary not come forward to actually give effect to this provision of the Constitution. So it, to that extent, I also want to blame the, the judiciary for having not uh, 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 well, the, 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 the sledgehammer of the law as it were. But, but, but so, isn't it somebody that's supposed to bring the case to the law, to the courts, in order to, uh, is it not, I mean, somebody will take course, that concern. The course. court cannot unilaterally yes. pick up these cases on their own. I agree. Okay, let me, let me give you an example of the case of uh, senators, uh, Goldswill, Akbabio, and a number of other senators who they come from the, AP, from the PDP to the APC sometime in 2017 or thereabout. And a non-governmental organization took those senators at the National Assembly to court 
federal high court uh, in Abuja. And their contention was that they told the court to interpret this section 68, subsection 1G of the Constitution to say that these senators have moved from their party to a different party without any division within their party, that they should be made to lose their seats. Now, what did the court say? The court said, yes, whereas the law provides for them to lose their seats, but that those who brought this suit before the court, they don't have the local standard to bring the action because it was brought by a non-governmental organization that is LIDAP. Legal, uh, uh, legal uh, development assistance. But that, that kind of um, shows that there is a possibility that these people can actually be taking. They can actually lose their seat. Yeah, they the can right actually lose their seat. Court. But I'm saying that uh, if, uh, the issue of local standard. You, you see, the, the judiciary is, is should be able to show direction. They have they have that platform to use to actually instill some level of discipline in the behavior of pol of politicians and political parties, and we saw the judiciary do that in the case of uh, in, in the Zamfara case. We saw how the Supreme Court, out of nowhere, there's no precedent, and they made a party to lose all that they thought they have amassed from the from the from the election. So in, in cases of this kind, given the prevalence of uh, this. Um, uh, uh, defection yeah, here yes. and there. You would expect the judiciary to actually make a very strong statement and say, yes, they may not have local standing in the eyes of the law, but the issue, you have found, the, you have found merit in the, in, the, in, in the suit. They should be made to lose their seat, at least to serve as a deterrent for sub subsequent uh, uh, politicians who want to take such, such course. Um, the, the issue of uh, while the judiciary have their role to play, we also have the political parties. They're supposed to be like, um, you know, help checkmate the activities of these people that come onto their platform to vie for positions. Now, many have said, even you have alluded to the fact that there is a lack of ideology and rules guiding these political parties. Yes. Will you say that explains why these people whom a lot of persons are describing as political prostitutes, yes. moving from one party to the other, to the other, to the other, as their interest changes, um, is largely to blame for that. Yes, I, I agree. You see, uh, politics is generally a game of numbers. And for political parties, they believe at any point, uh, one additional uh, person into the party increases the chances or the fortunes of the party at the next election. So they will not be bothered with asking questions of, oh, why are you coming back? Uh, do you not believe to, uh, do you not believe in some of our, our manifesto, the concept of our manifestos or not? It's not their, their concern. The concern is basically clinching winning the next election. So since when politicians move, they move with their supporters and their structures, they believe it's, it's, another, uh, it's, it's, it's another advantage for the party as it were to actually enhance their chances at the poll. So I agree, the political parties also have, uh, um, have uh, their, 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 their own problem, but it's all situated within the question of lack of ideology in political participation in, in, in Nigeria. Of course, this is something of worry for a lot of Nigerians, the lack of um, ideology and, you know, yes. um, clear path for these parties. Will that ever change, in your opinion? And if yes, how? Well, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't share the optimism because um, I, if we had more enlightened electorate here, I would think the electorate would have shaped, would have helped to shape that. Because you'd expect, um, if we had very informed electorate, who could actually go to the ballot and vote according to, and, and what, what I might call protest votes. You understand? When a, well, for example, in this case where this young man has now moved to the, um, to back to, his, to the APC, just because we know he wants to actually become the governor. If by 2023, he happens to be the candidate of the APC, and we saw um, people from Imo states uh, go to the ballot and vote the opposing, the opposing party. You see, it might help to, it might help to uh, send the message to politicians that whether you go to, whether you come from one party to the other, it's not a definitive test of your chances at the polls. We, as the electorate, who actually wield the power, who decide who becomes, can actually use, deploy our, our ballots to a way to make sure that also uh, uh, change government in power and also to instill discipline in the conduct of uh, political parties. But without that from the, from the standpoint of the, uh, of the electorate, I, I shudder to, uh, to, to think that uh, the, these politicians will change, except the judiciary also steps in and makes 
one or two senators to lose, actually lose their seats, and so to actually send that sense of deterrence. Well, what can, let's, let's, let's be ambitious now and think about a possible scenario where political parties will be formed based on ideology. Is that a possibility? If you think it is, how can we create such an Eldorado, <laughs> so to speak. Well, I'm happy you actually uh, ended up with the word Eldorado because, given the uh, if you look at the, the political history of Nigeria, you you you, you it's very clear that, that the politi our politics is basically on ethnicity and, and other sectoral and other very divisive uh, um, uh, leanings. You don't see people uh, you don't see people having serious conversation around key issues that are impact the electorate. People are concerned with where would the next president come from? Is it going to be from the East? Is it going to be from the West? Even the, even the choice of a party's candidate, the choice of a party's candidate is also calibrated along these lines. You understand? In 2023, the APC will be waiting to look at the PDP to see whether they're going to field a candidate from, from the East or whether they will field a candidate from the South. You understand? So if the politics of ethnicity and, and religion has actually shaped our political process. The question of ideology is almost... Well, uh, that is it, our unique I, um, um, identity. I was speaking with um, an ambassador earlier, and he said that we should be looking at Africanism, African kind of politics. This is our reality. We have ethnicity, we have religion. Can't we build a political party system that recognizes this diverse nature of our, uh, of our existence and put it into play and still form political parties that stand for something? Well, I, I, wouldn't, I, I wouldn't agree with that because ethnicity, religion are naturally, uh, 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 they, are, they are divisive in nature. You understand? If you want to build a political, uh, uh, a political um, system that is built around this, this concept, they are naturally divisive in their own nature. That means you're saying on election day, people will go and queue the whole Christians or people from one part of the country will go and vote for candidates from that region. You understand? So we are not the only people, we are not the only people in the world who practice divergent religions and who are from different nationalities, right? Yeah. So why should we be the people to build our own political process or system founded on this very divisive uh, um, um, concept, which people take very personal. Very personal. You, okay, you understand. Well, th so there's I don't been think... a suggestion, though. Yes. One of the suggestions is what happened with Dino Malai, that um, if the people are dissatisfied with the representation, they could ask for a recall. So can that be like amplified or adjusted in such a way that if uh, a political candidate comes up on the platform of a party and gets a position and then acts contrary, leaves that party for another party, is, can that be made grounds to recall that uh, political uh, person? No, well, the grounds for recall is totally different from the grounds for a senator losing their seats when he decamps without a division within the party he's decamping from. Please explain. Yes, the grounds for recall is, has to do with electorates, uh, people, members of a constituent represented by a senator who feel that, who no longer uh, feel satisfied with the level of representation they are getting from the individual senator then they can now initiate the process of recalling him back. It is not shaped by whether he has decamped from one party to the other. Yeah, but the can that be tweaked to, to apply it, to, to political parties? Ground. If you get into a political party, you get a position and you move, like the case of a court child's mm. uh, uh, son-in-law, mm. and you're not allowed back because, I mean, you left in your Well, in the even the issue of uh, losing your seat when you decamp to a different party does not even apply to members of the executive. Unfortunately, it applies to only to members of the National Assembly, Assembly and also members of the, the, the House of Assembly. It does not apply to members of the executive. So for them, they could keep moving and moving and moving uh, without any uh, 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 consequences constitutionally. Okay. Uh, on a final note, pundits have said that we as a people are the architect of our own rules. We should stop complaining because we celebrate these politicians who move from one place to the other and um, ahead of the political cycle we're going to get into in 2023. What can Nigeria do, Nigerians rather, do to pressure these political parties to try and create models that actually work for the people? 
Well, um, I agree that we are architects of our own misfortune. Of course, one man said that nations beget the kind of leaders uh, uh, they deserve based on how they how they how they um, how they, uh, uh, they, carry they, they carry on themselves. Right? Um, talking about what the masses can actually do to to, the, to 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 bring about this change. You see, the our political the democratic process we run here has um, uh, has the masses have limited role to play in the process by which candidates emerge. Candidates emerge, right? We have political parties conduct primary election, and most of them uh, they rarely conduct direct the direct primaries. They mostly conduct the indirect primaries, whereby members of the, ma the masses, as it were, do not play a role. You just delegates within the party, and when we talk about delegates, you mean persons who have been. You understand? They have understanding with the top candidate. So these candidates will eventually emerge as candidates without the electorate playing any dominant mm -hmm. role. Then when they become candidates, uh, it's 50% it's or even 60% of the job is almost done. And when, given the way we react to big parties here, if you eventually become a candidate of a particular party, it's as good as you have actually won the election. Have, have won the election. So, okay. so that short circuits the hands of uh, the, the electorate in actually uh, uh, bringing about this much, change. this much change. All right. I guess we'll have to leave it there for today. Thank you very much <laughs> for your thoughts so far. Um, we'll go on a short break. And when we return, we'll be talking about Shil Sani and his arrest. Stay with us. <laughs>